This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sport of Pro Wrestling podcast. I am Chris Samsa, and this is your New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 30 Night 5 Preview. G1 Climax 30 continues with a card that many circled on their calendars as one of the most exciting in the tournament as soon as cards were released. The main event will feature the first meeting of Switchblade Jay White and Kazuchika Okada, since Okada defeated White for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship last April in Madison Square Garden. The semi-main event will be a rematch of 2019's consensus match of the year, the best of the Super Juniors 26 finals between Shingo Takagi and Will Ospreay. Ospreay and Shingo are now proper heavyweights, but their hard-hitting, athletic styles will stand up against each other in what could be the most hotly contested match of the tournament. The undercard of tournament matches is filled out with Kota Ibushi and Tomohiro Ishii's third-ever G1 Climax tournament match, Jeff Cobb will look to stay hot against Never Openweight Champion Minoru Suzuki, and Taichi will match up with Yujiro Takahashi. Of course, you can find my complete statistical breakdown for every competitor in this year's G1 Climax at VoicesOfWrestling.com. I have interactive, sortable tables for NJPW's 2020, as well as every G1 Climax match to date and this year's tournament at SportOfProWrestling.com. And you can let me know what you find when you drill down by dropping me a line on Twitter at TheChrisSamsa. So this card will come at us from Kobe World Hall in Hyogo. That's on September 27th, 2020, and it'll be at 4 p.m. JST, a little bit of an earlier start time for the Sunday show. So that's 2 a.m. Chicago time, 3 a.m. in New York City, midnight on the West Coast if we're talking about the U.S. Of course, I've got local time conversions posted over in my preview at VoicesOfWrestling.com. You can certainly watch live or on demand at NJPW World, and the best way to use NJPW World is with the NJPW EXT extension. NJPW EXT is the only browser extension for NJPWWorld.com, with features like synchronized viewing parties, dark mode, improved translations and layouts, custom and shared playlists, and much, much more. It takes NJPW World to the next level. Visit njpwext.us today for details. The A Block has now had two tournament matches for each competitor in the tournament, and uh, we've got quite a wide variety of uh, of what's going on here. So at the top of the scoreboard, we've got Tai Chi, Will Ospreay, and Jay White, all 2-0 with four points. The middle of the scoreboard has four competitors with two points, so that's Jeff Cobb, Minoru Suzuki, Kazuchika Okada, and Kota Ibushi, and then the bottom, at 0-2, Yujiro Takahashi, Shingo Takagi, and Tomohiro Ishii. Just the other night, in A-Block action, we had five matches. Uh, We had Jeff Cobb defeat Shingo Takagi in 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Kazuchika Okada defeated Yujiro Takahashi in 12 minutes and 1 second. Taichi defeated Minoru Suzuki in 12 minutes and 11 seconds. Will Ospreay defeated Tomohiro Ishii in 18 minutes and 20 seconds, and Jay White defeated Kota Ibushi in a rematch of last year's G1 Finals in 20 minutes and 28 seconds. With two matches for each competitor uh, out of the way, now we can start to look at at least their average match lengths a little bit. Uh, Right now, at the top of that metric, we've got Kota Ibushi, uh, average match length of 21 minutes and 1 second, Total match length of 42.03, so he's the one going the longest. Uh, no real surprise there, as he was in both main events, so both um, highly contested matches with Jay White and Kazuchika Okada. And uh, at the low end of that metric, of course, is Yujiro Takahashi, averaging 9 minutes and 48 seconds, both losses to um, Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada. As we get further into the tournament, we can talk a little bit more about um, average winning length and average losing length. We can talk a little bit about who's attempting more pins or who is on the receiving end of more pinning attempts. And uh, probably once we have four four block matches uh, under everyone's belt, I'll be able to properly calculate their 
block win probability, which is the probability metric that I used uh, last year during the G1 in my finals previews on VoicesOfWrestling.com. So I don't want to call this card top heavy because I think it's it's really strong throughout. I think these matches, um, there's a lot of really good matchups on the card all the way down from from top to bottom, really. But it's hard to ignore the weight and gravity of Kazuchika Okada versus Jay White in our main event. So Jay White enters this match with four points and Kazuchika Okada enters with two as they're both coming off of uh, big wins the other night in uh, Hokkaido. Jay White over Kota Ibushi in that main event, like I mentioned before, and Kazuchika Okada defeating uh, someone he was expected to defeat in Yujiro Takahashi, but maybe that gets Okada back on track here. In just two years, Kazuchika Okada and Jay White have built one of the most heated rivalries in professional wrestling. Okada has long been the cream of the crop in NJPW. After a rapid ascent in 2012, he was able to maintain his status at the top of professional wrestling's mountain for almost a decade. The now 27-year-old Jay White returned from excursion in 2018, attempting to follow the blueprint that Kazuchika Okada laid out. White re-entered New Japan as a blue chip prospect with a clear chip on his shoulder. His first match back was a Wrestle Kingdom Intercontinental Championship match against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Unlike Okada, White wasn't able to shock the world with a victory over the ace in his debut as the Switchblade. After his loss, White joined Chaos in a move that many felt was disingenuous, as Bullet Club had been recruiting the blue chip prospect, and White seemed like the perfect fit for the nefarious faction. The skeptics turned out to be right. White turned on Chaos leader Okada just a few short months after asserting his dominance over Okada in White's first ever G1 Climax match, a victory over the Chaos leader. These two have met twice since then. At their Wrestle Kingdom 13 grudge match, Okada returned to his roots, trading in long pants for trunks, spreading his arms wide in a rainmaker pose, and he fought honorably to avenge the Switchblade's defection. Jay White was too much in the Tokyo Dome that night. He caught Okada with a Blade Runner just 14 minutes into their match and pinned him clean in the middle of the ring. White used his momentum to challenge Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship just a month later at New Beginning, coming out victorious and completing the mirror image of Okada's ascent to gain his own IWGP Heavyweight Championship. A newly motivated Okada went on to win the New Japan Cup in March of 2019, earning himself the opportunity to be the first to challenge White in an IWGP Heavyweight Championship defense at NJPW's largest event ever outside of Japan, the sold-out G1 Supercard at Madison Square Garden. That night, Okada was finally able to overcome the combination of Gato and Jay White to defeat the Switchblade. He regained the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, and he has been able to avoid his new nemesis, Jay White, ever since. Okada and White were scheduled to meet on March 7th in each of their first round matches of the New Japan Cup, but of course that match had to be delayed as NJPW took a hiatus as they began to manage the ongoing pandemic. Finally, in the G1 Climax main event on September 27th, Kazuchika Okada and Jay White will return to the building where Jay White and Gato defected from chaos by turning on Okada, beginning Bullet Club's new era almost two years ago to the date. As calculated as that moment was, White has grown to be even more cunning and more successful in the two years since he made a statement by attacking two legends of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazuchika Okada, after their match against each other at Destruction in Kobe. White has come out of the gate hot in this year's tournament, winning his first two matches. He opened up with a victory over Shingo Takagi in his return to Japan, and he overcame the incumbent champion, Kota Ibushi, on Wednesday in a rematch of last year's G1 Final. Okada has been reminiscent of his 2018 self, asserting less dominance than we're used to from the Rainmaker. Kota Ibushi put him into an 0-1 hole on night one by defeating him in just half the length of their recent Wrestle Kingdom match. In his second block match, Okada was able to defeat Yujiro Takahashi, but he looked sloppy, needing 12 minutes to defeat the consensus worst competitor in this year's G1 field. If anything is going to snap Okada back into his dominance, it'll be seeing Jay White across the ring in the same building of his legendary betrayal. White is as strong as he's ever been in the ring. Okada looks to right his ship in this tournament, and these two are certain to carry hard feelings into their first match against each other in almost 18 months.
So now that you're familiar with the story of Jay White and Kazuchika Okada, let's look at some of the statistics. Kazuchika Okada is 51, 21, and 4 in the G1 Climax all-time. That's for a field-leading winning percentage of 671. Jay White, in his third tournament now, is at 14-7 and seven at a winning percentage of 667. So if Jay White wins this match, he will surpass Okada in all-time G1 winning percentage. A win would move White into third place all-time among qualifying competitors behind only former Bullet Club leaders AJ Styles and Kenny Omega. In 2020, Kazuchika Okada is 9-4. Coming into this match with a winning percentage of 692, average match length of 2204. Jay White, 5 and 1 for one of the best winning percentages in New Japan, 833, uh, with an average match length of 2150. So these guys are uh, typically going about the same length of time, only a 14 second difference in their average match length. Of note though, this one's good. Kazuchika Okada's last 8 winning falls have come via the money clip, his version of the Cobra Clutch. Jay White last submitted in an NJPW ring on June 19th, 2016, in his last match as a young lion. White submitted to Hiroyoshi Tenzan to end a six-man tag at the beginning of Dominion. So that's maybe the story of the match, right? Okada committed to that money clip. Jay White has never really submitted in a New Japan ring since he was a young lion. So that's something to keep an eye out for. It Will Kazuchika Okada snap back into reality and hit Jay White with a Rainmaker and win this match? Kind of the same way that he snapped back into reality at Wrestle Kingdom with the short pants and the Rainmaker pose. Um, or will he stay committed to that Cobra Clutch and continue trying to win his matches that way? Even though he knows his uh, high-impact Rainmaker has a good chance to put Jay White away. Uh, when Jay White has been successful over Okada, his wins have averaged less than 20 minutes, so that's a uh, kind of a marker to keep an eye out for, uh, 19 minutes and 57 seconds to be exact. Okada's only victory over the Switchblade took 32 minutes and 33 seconds, so if we're looking historically at the, the match times, uh, Okada wouldn't have been able to defeat Jay White in the time limit of a G1 match. So a lot to keep an eye out for in Okada and Jay White. No surprise there as those two have um, put together one of the most compelling rivalries in professional wrestling over the past couple of years. Obviously, Okada comes in with a ton more experience in the G1 than Jay White, but Jay White's experience so far in the G1 has been pretty successful. So he, uh, he has a chance to go, uh, go to six points and really separate himself from uh, potentially most of the rest of the field. So if that's not enough to get you stoked on this show, we've got the semi-main event of Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi. The semi-main event will feature a rematch of 2019's Consensus Match of the Year as Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi will face off for the first time as truly established heavyweights in a rematch of last year's Best of the Super Juniors 26 Finals. That match was Ospreay's third Best of the Super Juniors Finals, so it'd be fair to define that as his home field. On September 27th, Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi will meet in Kobe World Hall, a building that Shingo Takagi has wrestled in 15 times over his career in Dragon Gate and New Japan. This is Shingo Takagi's home turf. Takagi entered last year's Best of the Super Juniors finals undefeated in New Japan after going 9-0 through the A block, amassing an NJPW tournament record of 18 points. Shingo and Osprey enter their first ever G1 matchup with a much wider gap between them. Osprey comes in at 2-0 with 4 points after defeating Yujiro Takahashi and Tomohiro Ishii in his first two block matches of G1 Climax 30. Takagi enters on a three-match losing streak with zero points in the tournament. First, he lost his never open weight title to Minoru Suzuki at Summer Struggle in Jingu, and he has begun his G1 Climax with two losses to Jeff Cobb and Jay White. Shingo Takagi looks to right his course and even his head-to-head -head record with the man who may be his most equal matchup in New Japan, Will Ospreay. Ospreay and Takagi are both in their second G1 Climax tournament. They both ended their 2019 G1 campaigns with 4-5 and five records, landing at 8 points. And their paths have been divergent since because uh, Will Ospreay has won his first two matches this year. Takagi lost his first two, as I mentioned, so Ospreay's total G1 record right now sits at 6-5, and five, whereas Shingo... 
continues to fall under that 500 mark. He's now at 4-7. and seven. Even after a 7-minute and 34-second victory over Yujiro Takahashi and an 18-minute and 20-second victory over Tomohiro Ishii, Will Ospreay's average of 18 minutes and 59 seconds remains the longest among this year's G1 field. But we'll see if those averages mean anything, as uh, this is Shingo Takagi's home turf. He's wrestled 15 times in Kobe World Hall, including 14 straight Dragon Gate Kobe Pro Wrestling Festivals, the Hyogo-based company's biggest card of the year. While this may be Shingo's home turf, he hasn't fared especially well in World Hall. He is only 3-5 and five all-time in singles matches, and 8-7 and seven overall in the building. Shingo's only NJPW match in the venue was a loss to Hiroki Goto at last year's Destruction and Kobe event. Osprey and Takagi both enter this match at 500 on the year, but clearly on different trajectories. Osprey started the year 0-2, but has since picked up two victories in the G1, and Shingo Takagi started the year 4-1 and and has since lost three in a row. And here's where they come together on their statistics, though. Will Osprey's average loss is an NJPW high 25 minutes and 48 seconds. Shingo Takagi's average win takes 21 minutes and 6 seconds, which is good for fourth highest in New Japan, behind only Tetsuya Naito, Kazuchika Okada, and Evil. So Takagi will fight and labor for those victories where Will Ospreay will avoid defeat for as long as humanly possible. Osprey and Takagi were scheduled to face each other in the first round of the New Japan Cup on March 8th this year, but that match was delayed as NJPW went on hiatus. At 33 minutes and 33 seconds, Will Osprey wouldn't have been able to defeat Shingo Takagi under block match rules under the 30-minute time limit. So, there's some parallels there with our semi-main event and our main event, where Will Ospreay was able to defeat Shingo Takagi, but only over that 30 minutes, and the only time Kazuchika Okada's been able to defeat Jay White was also over those 30 minutes. They were also both scheduled to compete in the first round of this year's New Japan Cup. I wish there was more to deep dive into with these two, but when it really comes down to it, that match of the year that they had last year at the best of the Super Juniors final um, speaks for itself. So these guys, I think they're just a budding and building rivalry, and I think tonight we're going to see just the second chapter of what I hope is is many more to come. Third from the top of the card, we've got another A-block match of Kota Ibushi and Tomohiro Ishii. Kota Ibushi enters this match with two points on the board, uh, a one and one record. Tomohiro Ishii, 0 for 2, uh, with zero points on the board. Uh, they're both coming off tough losses on Wednesday night in Hokkaido. Ibushi's nine-match winning streak in the G1 finally snapped as he fell in the main event to Jay White. Tomohiro Ishii's G1 losing streak was extended to four matches across the last two tournaments as he fell to Will Ospreay in their first ever one-on-one match. Ishii looks to put his first points on the board in what could be considered an upset over the incumbent champion Kota Ibushi. Ibushi looks to get his 2020 tournament back on track with his third straight G1 victory over the Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii. The historical series between these two overall is led by Kota Ibushi, with the Golden Star winning their last two meetings, both in G1 Climax tournaments. So that was G1 Climax 27 and G1 Climax 28. Tomohiro Ishii's only victory over Kota Ibushi came in 2014, as he defended the Never Openweight Championship against Ibushi, while Ibushi was still splitting his time between DDT and NJPW, and still technically probably considered a junior heavyweight. As we head one more match down the card, we've got Jeff Cobb versus Minoru Suzuki. Jeff Cobb and Minoru Suzuki both enter their match in the middle of the pack with one win and one loss in this year's tournament, both at two points. Cobb enters after a grueling victory over Shingo Takagi, and Suzuki enters after losing to his subordinate Taichi in just the third time that a subordinate has defeated a leader in a G1 Climax match. The last time that happened, Jay White defeated Kazuchika Okada in 2018. And the first tournament match on the card will be Taichi versus Yujiro Takahashi. Taichi and Yujiro Takahashi enter the night at different ends of the scoreboard. Taichi, a surprise leader with four points out of the gate after his huge win over Suzuki, and Yujiro, to nobody's surprise, at zero points after his matches with Will Ospreay and Kazuchika Okada. Taichi's entering this match on a three-match G1 winning streak, dating back to the last match of 2019's tournament. Only Will Ospreay's four-match winning streak is currently longer than Taichi's. This will be Yujiro Takahashi and Taichi's first singles matches under their uh, current personas. They have met three times in the past before Yujiro Takahashi began using his last name, so he used to just go as Yujiro, 
and while Taichi was still using his, Taiji Ishikari. Uh, in those matches, Taichi is 2-1, and one, and they happen between 2006 and 2008. So not a lot of relevance to those at this point. It's been a very long time, and these are essentially different people. The thing to look out for there is whether or not Tai Chi can stay on his uh, winning ways. And if Tai Chi goes to six, uh, you got to imagine that he's got a good shot at landing close to the top of the block. And uh, his last block night later on in the tournament is against Kota Ibushi. So that could be telling for Kota Ibushi to have something to fight for later on if he's not able to course correct here. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope it's okay that I spent significantly more time on the main event and the semi-main event as those are some big matches in this in the in the course of this year's tournament. And we took a little sneak peek at the other three matches on the card, but of course, you can find this preview in written form at sportofprowrestling.com or voicesofwrestling.com. There are some more um, little facts and figures regarding those last three matches. Um, and I'll be back Monday to preview the September 29th B Block card from Cork and Hall, featuring a main event of Hiroki Goto and Evil. Give me a follow on Twitter at the Chris Samsa to interact with me during these G1 shows. I appreciate you giving me a listen and letting me help you stay up to date in this year's G1 Climax Tournament. I'll see you next time on the Sport of Pro Wrestling Podcast.